Hello, welcome to this last video on the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. We're looking at the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 2, the one that states if you have a function that's defined by an integral, then you can take its derivative. And it's just a matter of replacing the, the dummy variable in the function with the x from the upper limit. So we're talking about g of x being equal to some constant a to x, the integral, of some function f of t, okay? And so we're going to look at an example. Um, it has multiple parts to it, multiple questions that we're going to answer about this particular function who is made up of a semicircle and then a line and another semicircle. We'll call that function f of t. And what g of x does is it accumulates area under f of t. So it starts at 0, so it starts exactly at the at the um, y-axis, and we can plug in x equals 2. It'd be the area from 0 to 2, x equals 4, x equals 6. We can plug in different values and figure out how to evaluate this function g, who is accumulating area under f. All right, great. On the next slide, what we're going to do is break this up into areas that we can recognize. Okay, so we draw on these lines here, and we recognize a bunch of rectangles and triangles and semicircles. We can use geometry to find the area under the graph. We won't want to be able to integrate these functions. In fact, we won't be able to yet. We don't know the skill. We don't have the skill to be able to integrate the uh, semicircular parts. We can integrate the line. So instead of integrating, we're actually going to execute the integral by evaluating the uh the function g and looking at these shapes we can't do it at all we can do it at two and four but we could do it at six for sure okay we got a nice rectangle there from zero to six and on top of that rectangle is a circle our function is the actual circle part we put in the purple lines to represent the purple area but it's the purple area and the red area is the un area under the graph and then the function has that straight line we have these identical rectangles, and then, so the function then dips below the x-axis. Remember now, area underneath the x-axis is negative area. Okay, so this diameter of this semicircle is of length 6. That makes the radius of length 3. So instead of pi r squared, we have half of pi r squared because we have a semicircle. So instead of 9 pi, we're going to have half of 9 pi. 9 pi over 2 represents the area of just the semicircle. If we're evaluating g, though, anywhere from 0 to 6, um, we're actually if we're evaluating g at 6, we have to also add in there the area. There's more area underneath the graph. There's also that purple rectangle, but that's just a 6 by 2 rectangle. So that area is 12. So if you want to evaluate g, at 6. You go from the area from 0 to 6, and we can just add up these two shapes. Okay, how about the area from 6 to 8? That's a that's a right triangle, so the area is the half the base times the height. That's a 2 by 2, so half of 4. That area is 2. But then after 8, our function dips below the x-axis. So all areas that we get geometrically or with integration, they end up as negative areas. So we have another triangle, exactly identical to the, to the previous triangle, but the area is in 2, now the area is negative 2. Um, that rectangle is a 4 by 2 rectangle, so that's a negative 8. And then that semicircle has a diameter of 4, so a radius of 2. So instead of 4 pi, it's 4 pi over 2 or 2 pi, but negative 2 pi. All right, great. We are ready to answer any question that we might be asked about this. There'll be four questions that we're going to answer. First up, evaluate g of 14. Remember what g of x is. g of x is the integral from 0 to x. So they're saying plug in x equals 14. Find the integral from 0 to 14. Find the area under the curve from 0 to 14. That's the entire area here. We take the red semicircle, the purple rectangle, the two blue triangles, 
the gray rectangle and the green semicircle. We add them all up. That's the total area that's here. The negatives are going to take away from the positives, but we're going to end up with 4 plus 5 pi over 2. That's the total area from 0 to 14. All right, great. How about the area from 0 to 10? That just means you don't have everything now. You have the red and the purple and the two blue. You stop at 10. You don't get the gray rectangle. You don't get the green semicircle. So it has the same initial parts, but it stops at the 10. X equals 10, which is the second triangle, the first negative area triangle there. And um, those twos cancel out. So 12 plus 9 pi over 2. And that's more than the previous answer, because if we keep going, we're, we're, we're taking away from this value. So it's going to get smaller. All right, great. Now here's a tough question. We want to evaluate G prime of 6. Okay. Now, we have G, who's the integral from 0 to x. Um, that should say actually fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Sorry about that. Let's see if I can draw it in there. There we go. Fundamental theorem of calculus part two is going to say, well, the way you're going to take the derivative of that g function is you're going to just replace the t with with replace the t with a, an x. So you just get f of x. The function f of x. Now remember the function is this semicircle part. Sorry, I'm drawing with a trackpad and my finger, so it's going to be pretty bad. <laughs> and then we have the straight line part. And then we have one more semicircle part. Oh, it's terrible. Sorry. That's the function f. Okay. And so g prime is going to be equal to f of x. From the fundamental theorem of calculus part two, our job plug a six in to g prime. Well, that's the same thing as plugging a six in to f. Okay. So we're going to plug a six into f. Now, here's a picture without the colored uh, areas in there. And your job is to plug a six into f. When x is six, you need the f function value. So you go up and see the y value when f is 6. And it turns out it's at that connection point between the first semicircle and the line and the y value there is y equals 2. This is the answer to the third question. All right, we try to fit in one more question where um, we want to ask what is the absolute maximum value of our function g of x, this area accumulating function. Okay, remember how we do absolute maximum value questions? We um, get a chart. Um, interested in an interval from zero to fourteen. So we have zero in there. We have fourteen in there. We'll go ahead and evaluate these right now. What is g of zero? It's the integral from zero to zero. That's going to be zero. Whenever the bounds match, there's no area there. And we did g of 14 already. That was our first question, letter A. So that's 4 plus 5 pi over 2. So we're trying to find the absolute maximum value. You plug in the endpoints, and then you search for critical points that happen in between those endpoints. Critical points are places where your derivative is equal to 0, or possibly your derivative does not exist. But here, the derivative exists everywhere. Well, yeah, derivative exists everywhere. And so um, there it is again. Fundamental theorem of calculus part 2. Sorry. I'll fix the slides before I post them again. Um, we take the derivative. We're just getting the function value. And so if I want a critical point, I want to find a place where my derivative is equal to 0 at. Well, it'll be a place where my function is equal to 0 at because they're one and the same. The derivative of g is the function f. <coughs> Where's the function equal to 0 at? Where does the function cross the x-axis at? x equals 8. 
So we need g of 8. Well, it's just those three areas there. The purple rectangle, 12. The red semicircle, 9 pi over 2. And the blue triangle. 14 plus 9 pi over 2. That's g of 8. Does it make sense, though? You're accumulating positive area up to a certain point, x equals 8. And then you'll be accumulating negative area, taken away from the positive accumulation that you already had. <coughs> so it's going to come down from there. Okay. And so, yeah, that's our maximum, definitely, at x equals 8. 14 plus 9 pi over 2 is much more than 4 plus 5 pi over 2. And so... We did it. We found an absolute maximum value. We've gone over 10 minutes. I'm sorry. But I wanted to finish that question. And it was a good question. Ties everything in together from the old material. And so hopefully that was helpful. All right. We're done with the fundamental theorem of calculus. Hopefully these videos have been informative, helped you get a grip on it. Um, my name is Nakaya Rimmer. Thank you for watching. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.